He makes it look effortless. This shot or his bookkeeping. <laughs> Welcome to Ness and Stuart, and we've still got a little bit of time left here on day two of the Lord's Test. And day two means it is the Ruth Strauss Foundation Test as well. We've had a sea of red on the field, and we've had a little bit of a magical moment because, well, the great man, Jimmy Anderson, has just passed 40,000 legal deliveries, which we kind of worked out was about 681 miles run. That's not too bad. You thought it was going to be more, didn't you? I did think more. It's a lot of <laughs> a lot of kicking of footholes that right. <laughs> turning around. Um, yeah, it's it, it's incredible. I think whenever you look at any of Jimmy's numbers, you know, mm. 188 Test matches, you know, 703 Test match wickets, and, they count, all, and, counting, and counting, and counting, they all just <laughs> all of the numbers don't look real, do they? It's been such a illustrious career, an incredible career, mm. and a career that you feel like he could have kept going for a couple more years. You know, he's just yeah. someone who's um, you know, just loves the game, loves the loves everything about it, and uh, yeah, it's it, it's been incredible to be here actually, and I think that all the supporters will feel the same being at Lords for these two days, just seeing him operate and and doing what he does best has has been great. It's been well, brilliant. We go from the longevity of Jimmy's career to the shortness of this Test match now. So it's going, yeah. it's moving really, really quickly, isn't it? It, it is. I mean, it couldn't have gone. I was going to say, it couldn't have got more perfectly for England. Now, whether England wants to be tested a little bit more, I doubt it. On the back of the results that they have had, and that they've lost to India, obviously recently, yeah. um, they didn't regain the Ashes last summer, although they came back pretty well, and they sit bottom of the Test match, uh, Test World Championship table. So. It's been clinical, it's been ruthless so far. They won the toss, had a bowl. They've had the better of conditions, but they are the better side. And it's not the conditions that yeah. mean they are winning this game. You know, they, they bowl beautifully up front. Um, Atkinson in particular on debut. It looks like the lads they've selected over time, especially in the bowling, just come in and immediately get wickets, whoever they are. So he was brilliant yesterday. The batters backed it up. You could argue could have been a bit more ruthless. One of those 50s, 550s in the innings could have gone and got on a big 100, um, but they had a healthy lead of 250. And when you have a seam attack that they have, um, absolutely brilliant. For me, the biggest bonus, I don't know what Stuart thinks about it, is Ben Stokes' back bowling. Bowling without a limp and without a grimace, it just means so much to that attack to have Stokes. He equaled what he went, yeah, he equaled the stats of... Sobers and Callis, yeah. which is, you're thinking of Gary Sobers and Jacques <laughs> Callis. That is a phenomenal effort. So um, having, having Stokes back bowling, I think, is the biggest bonus for England. There'd be a bit of annoyance within the English camp in terms of those batters, not one of them not going on to three figures and more? Uh, no, I don't think so. I, mean, I think individually there'll be frustration. Mm. Um, Particularly Harry Brook, I think, in his mode of mode of dismissal, someone like Joe Root got it, just a really good ball that he couldn't do much about. But uh, Brendan McCullum within the change room doesn't talk about milestones like that. Yes, yeah. of course, we celebrate a, a, a hundred at, in, in Test match cricket, but it's very much about the style of play and how we're moving the game forward. Mm. Um, I, I, Joe, Joe Root smiled, didn't he, when he got out? But I know that that wouldn't have been a smile of, with any happiness beneath it at all because no, uh, yeah. he would have felt, he looked like he was booking in for, for a big hundred. And, um, you know, ultimately, I think England could have, could have got more runs. They could have, could have gone on and got a 450, 500 on this sort of pitch. Uh, but I thought it was, it, it was great to see Jamie Smith play the way he did. And that is the exact reason he's been, been picked, that when he does bat with the lower order, he can take the game away from the opposition and we saw an extremely eye-catching six out the ground, a sweep shot for four and, you know, I think it must be nice as a coach or a selector or a captain when you pick a player yeah. for a reason and he goes and delivers in, in his first innings and, um, yeah, I, I don't think, I, within the change room there won't be disappointment that there wasn't a hundred because it's, it's going to prove to be a, a match-winning first innings score but um, there'll be some personal frustration there. Jamie Smith had a maturity almost beyond his years, didn't he? I mean, I, I thought it was great that he came out, and not that you plan these things, but he had Joe Root at the other end, so a senior player there who was quite invested in the way in which he started at his innings. But after that, he just took it on and with a plum. Yeah, I've never been worried about his batting, actually. Mm -hmm. I know that sounds like a big comment or an after-the-event sort of comment, but when you've looked at him in the last couple of years in domestic cricket, red ball and white ball, and you speak to players and ex-players, and also umpires and stuff, they're the ones that are saying this lad 
Jamie Smith is something special and obviously fits in the mode and the style of what Stokes and McCullum put pressure back on the bowlers and as Stewart says when you get with the tail put pressure back on the bowlers don't just be going nowhere it's a difficult um, position to grab really if you're an all-rounder like Stokes or Holder as long as one of your disciplines is going well you feel comfortable you stay in the side you continue as a keeper if one is not going well you often get dropped so you think of Johnny Bairstow in the Ashes, he came under immense pressure because he was dropping catches and you can't afford to do that in an Ashes series. And then you go to Folks who was taking the catches, but he wasn't quite getting the runs. And then he, even if he got the runs, he wasn't getting them at the rate with the tail that they wanted. So it's a difficult position. And you've got, you know, lads like Ollie Robinson up at Durham who's keeping brilliantly and getting runs. So there's a lot of them in English cricket, men's and women's cricket. So it's a difficult position. We wish him well because he's a real talent. And the glove work, it's like being a, I don't know, it's like being a good goalkeeper or referee or something. If you don't talk about it, you know he's had a good game. <laughs> yeah. And we haven't spoken about his wicket-keeping simply because he's done nothing wrong. Yeah. He's caught when they've nicked it. He's caught it and, and done very well. I know we've spoken about England quite a bit so far. Um, but I wanted three moments for, for the West Indies. Um, Jaden Seals, to start with, took a four for an impressive four for He got duck at Crawley yesterday and then uh, Wokes and Smith today sort of figured out how to bowl both ends here. Yeah, he's bowled really well. Mm. And I think he bowled great for Sussex as well, actually. Watched a bit of him at the early season and I think it really stood out that he was the bowler who's been playing cricket, playing a lot of cricket, had some workload, got mm. some miles in the legs, got some rhythm with the with the Duke's ball because um, I think a couple of their bowlers looked out of rhythm, looked short of bowling. Yeah. Um, but I thought Seals attacked both edges. He bowled really well. Both ends probably suits the pavilion end slightly more with the with the nip down the slope. Um, so he's a he's a particular highlight in their in their bowling group actually. It looks like someone at 22 years old you could build a bowling attack around. Yeah, uh, injuries to Shamar Joseph, uh, unfortunately for the West Indies, but Moti bowled two absolute peaches of deliveries to get Stokes and Root. Yeah, you called it this morning, actually, with Ian Ward, and you said that, that Moti could be useful because he bowled last night and he just got a couple to grip. They were massive turning deliveries. And Lords, day one, day two, I mean, historically, Lords doesn't spin big. You look at that honours board, and for every four seamers, there's one spinner who's got a fifer. So generally, it's seam and swing, and the spinner plays a role. Um, but he bowled, yeah. I mean, the, the ball to Stokes, he made Stokes drive because of the dip that he got in it. Stokes yeah. reacted because of the spin, but actually what got Stokes out was the drop that he got on it. I think it was 91k, and then he followed that up with an arm ball to root, which was 98k, that just held, it, went down the slope. Uh, two beautiful bits of bowling. Yeah, the third one I want to mention is uh, one of the debutants as well, um, Mikhail Louis from the West Indies and the run out. Like the yeah. throw was it was a decent distance, wasn't it? And all the calls was to go to Smith's ends, to the bowler's end, and he went against that. He probably had a better angle for, for three stumps um, to go the opposite end. And then off he took to congratulate with his brother, who's not playing but sitting on the sidelines. Oh, it was a great <laughs> moment, wasn't it? It was uh, the, the energy and the celebration uh, once the ball hit the stumps was, was superb. It's sort of looking back to the Gabba moment when Shamar Joseph yeah. took that wicket and everyone was running around the outfield. It was... Uh, it was a celebration similar to that. So, yeah, it was, you know, ultimately when you get to play at Lords, it's always such a special venue to come to and to, to produce a bit of fielding like that is, is something that will go in the memory. And actually, I think with his batting, he's looked really solid, you know. And, and I quite enjoyed his frustration today that he, he played a little bit of a little bit of a softer defensive shot outside his off stump and nicked one to Stokesy that moved away from him. And it, it, he had that reaction like... I'm really frustrated with myself. I knew that I shouldn't have done that. And that shows quite a nice hunger with him. He didn't just walk off and go, oh, well, it's a half-decent ball. Yeah. Um, and I think he played some, some nice shots. He shaped up, he shaped up well. Uh, and you know, Lord's is a very difficult place to come when, you don't, when you've not played it before and you've not experienced English conditions because the slope adds to the swing and the movement. So, uh, you know, I think th these guys will be better for the batting. It will be better for a, for a run out here when they get to Trent Bridge and, and moving forward to Edgebaston? I think they've got to discuss maybe their tempo. I think we always felt that it was going to be a, a difference in styles. It was a little bit against Australia last summer, but this is even more noticeable in the England going at over four runs and over. And, and the West Indies, because they're finding conditions and because they haven't played much and because they're inexperienced, they sort of don't know whether to stick or twist. And they have stuck and they've gone nowhere. Mm. Um, and it's almost like... 
should we be putting the pressure back on the bowlers somehow? If you keep against world-class bowlers, is what created the change to Basball? We had Rob Key working with us, and he firmly believed that if you just let world-class bowlers bowl, eventually they will get you out. So you're talking come in Stark, Hazelwood, Broad, Anderson, <coughs> excuse me, whoever, you have to try and put them under pressure. Uh, and they may have to just rethink that balance between survival mode and actually scoring and getting, once you score and get to 20, 30, 40 and hit boundaries, it lifts your confidence, it boosts your confidence, you feel better at the crease. Yep, so the West Indies coming in today after tea and they were trailing by 250 runs and it, uh, it turned pretty quickly. Brathwaite for the eighth time has been dismissed by Jimmy Anderson. He got him for his 500th back in 2017, I think it was, with almost exactly the same delivery. He'll be pretty happy that this is Jimmy's last test. I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jimmy lines him up quite nicely, doesn't he? Particularly Pavilion and at Lords when it yeah. runs down the slope <laughs> onto middle stump. I think, yeah, Jimmy's got that... Ability to challenge both edges, you know, run it back mm. and, and bowl you, but also bring that outside edge in. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, certainly there's a, there's an opening batter there who's pleased that Jimmy Anderson won't be walking out at Trent Bridge. Can I ask you a question, like the Shane Warne, Daryl Cullen moments. Cycle or not statistically, you know your stats, there'll be certain batters that you and Jimmy got out the most. But which, we may have another wicket there. I think we, do, we have to. a very good it. catch as well. Right, and yeah. it's penultimate ball. Yeah. Holder so gone and Bashir's taken the catch at short leg, I think. Yeah, Jason Holder wasn't happy. There was a bit of movement behind the bowler's arm. We may even get an extra half an hour here. We could have the longest vodcast we ever. <laughs> <laughs> do you think with four wickets to go, could you claim the extra half hour? Well, one of them, Shamar, who was, you know, I don't know if he's going to bat. And then the umpires have to decide whether they would give it to England, so we will find that soon. But who would you say, Jimmy, which batter had the worst nightmares about Jimmy? And you, who, who do you think you had the wood over the most? Not got them out, but they were fearful of Broad and Anderson. Yeah, good, good question. Uh, Warner for you, surely. Warner back end of my career, I think. Right. Uh, I think more mid, maybe, I quite like bowling at Ross Taylor, you know, the... the middle order batter, number four batter for New Zealand and just because he was a really nervous starter so they've, and I, my, my, my mindset was always target those first ten balls and if Ross Taylor got to 20 runs he was away and off he went and he belt you everywhere but those, he was a very nervous mover so I thought if I hit his stumps early uh, I, I've got a good chance um, actually yeah. walking off for the end of the day here. So uh, Jimmy? Uh, Jimmy um, I felt like he, you know, he bought, I think he bought really nicely against Michael Clark. Clark pushed quite hard at the mm. ball, wanted to, to drive the ball and be aggressive. And Jimmy's just accuracy and uh, holding length was put him under pressure. Yeah, was that Jaffa at Trent Bridge? Jaffa at Trent Bridge. And Jimmy pointing to the stumps. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I, I think any time Peter Siddle went by me saying this, but any time Peter Siddle walked to the crease, and Jimmy was bowling, it's like, you might as well just walk off. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know what it, Jimmy just used to bowl like in-swingers to him and he'd nick them. It was, it was like, you just predict what's going to happen. But actually early in my career, uh, and Jimmy Anderson used to get uh, Sachin Tendulkar out a lot, just had that sort of, be able to move the ball away. It, something about Jimmy's action, action that Sachin used to, used to leave him and it would hit him on the pad. And um, Jimmy just seemed to, to be able to bring him forward, but a length that he couldn't drive or couldn't quite get to. So uh, I'd say uh, early on in a career, I definitely remember any time Sachin came on, it would be get Jimmy on straight away. That's going to push our vodcast. Yeah, but numbers. also, I mean, look at... Headline, <laughs> Sachin Tendulkar could not play Jimmy Anderson. Yeah. He was well, Jimmy's bunny. I'm just glad headline. you finally got there. Otherwise, it would have been stuck on Peter Siddle and Jimmy would be like, come on, <laughs> yeah, any, yeah, any yeah, danger. Yeah. <laughs> it's, gone, it's gone up a couple of levels there. Yes, a little bit. <laughs> Peter Siddle to Sachin Tendulkar as batters. Uh, the other th thing I was going to ask you very, very quickly is you do get nervous at... Ben Stokes is back. He's bowled 10 straight as mm -hmm. well, just in terms of just managing his body. For It's, it's a long summer. We've got two more tests against the Windies and then Sri Lanka as well. Should he be doing it? Yeah. No. Right. <laughs> yes, no. No, but no. he's captain and, and he's not been bowling for a long time. And he did it for Durham at the start yeah. of the season. Yeah. And I think I might have even tweeted, like, Stokesy, what are you doing? Take yeah. yourself up to six. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, he just gets that rhythm and he mm. and once he gets going he doesn't want doesn't want to bowl four overs and have to come back so yeah. he's thinking right 
this is my time to do that sort of block for the team and he goes yeah. for it. Well, we're going to have to come back tomorrow because that is the end of the day's play. And we have the West Indies still trailing by 171 runs. Joss De Silva is the last of the recognised batters. He's eight not out. Jimmy Anderson has finished the day's play with two for 11, which means 703. Three. Three. Three wickets to his name. How many more can he get for the end of his career? We'll have to find out tomorrow. You can join us then at the back end of tomorrow's play, which might not, most likely not, be this time tomorrow. It'll be a little <laughs> bit earlier. We'll wait and see. Thanks for joining us.